Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video we begin with testing the Attila Thruster which we ended with in the previous video. Uh, so I made some adjustments to my setup with the Attila Thruster. Just a reminder the Attila Thruster is meant to save us from the enormous ion engine burns because it is it has the efficiency of an ion engine but it has more thrust. So basically it's hooked up to a fairly large nuclear reactor and generator. It's a heavy assembly, uh, but it will give us a lot of thrust and also good ISP, good efficiency. So we are launching it with the Kasei rocket with eight of the Sujita boosters. Those are the boosters going off. Those are methane oxygen boosters. It is a hydrogen oxygen core, and that has five uh, RS-68 class engines on it. And then one of those engines, which I call the ED-6, on the upper stage here. There goes fairing separation. And so that is, it's not really a test bed, it's my intended uh, mission to Mercury to save Arthur, Arthur E. King, who wanted to go to Mercury and now is running out of food, water, and oxygen. So that vehicle at the top there carries a whole lot of food, water, and oxygen. But I'm unsure at the moment whether the Attila thruster is gonna work properly or not and give us the thrust we need. So here we have a nuclear stage, which we are not going to use right now because uh, that will be for the main transfer to Mercury, but we're just testing this assembly out during the live stream here. So it is, again, from a Twitch live stream. And what we want here from the Attila thruster right there is more thrust. Uh, it is taking too long, and we can't time warp during these burns with the Attila thruster. Well, we can do physical time warp, but that's only up to four times. So. Right now it's not providing enough thrust for me. And the problem is somebody, and I don't remember who it was, told me that the size didn't matter for the Attila thruster. Now it's from KSB Interstellar. And mostly for KSB Interstellar, you match the size of the engine to the reactor and the generator. So they're, they're all part of the same form factor. If it's 2.5 meters for the uh, reactor, it's 2.5 meters for the generator, and 2.5 meters for the actual engine that connects to it. But somebody during my live stream said, and they were the ones who suggested the Attila thruster in the first place. I didn't even know about it. I, uh, so I was clueless, clueless about it and going with what they said, but they said that it was all right to make it smaller. Uh, but it was not. Uh, and I find that out eventually. But at the moment, I'm just trying various other ways of solving the problem of the limited thrust. And so we launch again with more radiators to dissipate the heat. And I was hoping that that would make it work more efficiently. Because uh, the thrust is actually dropping as we continue the burn. So I thought maybe that would be something that would fix it. For some reason I didn't understand, after we went to the upper stage, it started deviating here. And Smart ASS is supposed to be controlling it, but it's definitely not. And I didn't quite understand why. So I uh, started the uh, RCS thrusters, but that was not good enough. Check the gimbling. Uh, the gimbling is fine. I mean, it's supposed to be there. Uh, so I decided to try and control it manually. So here I am taking manual control to get it back to prograde. But this was a um, curious sort of problem that I was not expecting. Obviously I can gimbal the engine. So why Smart ASS was having any problems I, I, did, not, I did not know. So anyway, uh, it still was sort of wobbly though for me and I didn't quite get it right and we had a residual roll and the RCS was not stopping that roll. So anyway, we needed to use the nuclear engine to get ourselves to orbit because I wasted too much fuel on the upper stage for it to finish the orbital burn, otherwise it would. And actually the separatrons on the upper stage there can deorbit it. So that's fairly a fairly nice setup. Here we go, making orbit there, and once again testing this with additional radiators now. You can see the ones that are extendable. And it improves the situation somewhat, but the, you can still see the stage time going up and the thrust going down. So that wasn't very helpful in terms of our ability to do these things during a live stream a little bit better, because you know, a two and a half hour burn time during live stream. Uh, we're not going to use all 24,000 meters per second at the same time, mind you. I'm checking the reactor there. But, you know, it's, there are still very long burns. Speaking of long burns, here's Arthur. We had to do a maneuver for uh, his vehicle. This is a correction maneuver. 
But you can see the food, water, and oxygen in Arthur's vehicle. It's getting a little bit low. And so that's why I'm trying to get this Attila supply vessel to work. And here I am trying to fiddle around with it and launch it again. But I still haven't increased the size of the thruster at the bottom, you see. Eventually, in subsequent live streams, we'll have the larger size thruster and it'll work better. But for now, I decided to basically put up with the low thrust and take the long time it takes to do the burns. And we'll just do it during 4x time warp, so Kasei rocket doing its thing. Ooh, we had a little bit of roll, and roll definitely does not help the fairings go off smoother, I'll say. At least those procedural fairings. At least that, at that size. So we have a pretty substantial roll here that is not being stopped by the RCS. This is a flaw in having just a single engine and not two engines. <laughs> Boy, it's having having a fun time. So the we are sending it out to Mercury this time, and so we used a nuclear engine to do the first part of the burn. There's a Timberwind engine, and that completes its part. And then we're on to the Attila thruster. Unfortunately, the Attila thruster does have its very low thrust. And so here we go. I mean, I say very low thrust, but it's nothing compared to ion engines, but with the ion engines, we can time warp during it because I've got that configured right. I didn't have that configured for the... and this is totally wayward now. So I don't know, sometimes smart ASS just can't deal with vehicles, apparently with the Attila thruster? I don't know. It just was having trouble with this at that time. So, got a residual roll, but... I'm controlling it with SAS right now. SAS can deal with it, Smart ASS cannot. And you can see it's taking a while. At that height, that far away from the Earth, we were still not on escape yet. We are still trying to pass by the Moon's orbit. And it keeps going because we have to go all the way to Mercury orbit. Actually, we're not rendezvousing with Mercury. We're rendezvousing directly with Arthur, Arthur's vehicle. So we're going to try and get an intercept with Arthur. And you can see me with that target there. We're just trying to get as close as possible. So we'll directly meet up with Arthur because Arthur probably doesn't have enough food, water, and oxygen to get to Mercury at this point. Anyway, I finally managed to complete the burn, but it took a long time. Like, I don't know, I don't... You can see the timer in the corner and try and figure it out based on 4x time warp. I don't even want to think about it. But we had a correction burn to do later. And that would be in 24 days. And so I'm just fiddling around with it, trying... But you can see the relative speed. We we don't have any spare fuel, really. The correction burn plus the relative speed when we get there will basically be all the propellant that we have with the tilt thruster, which is actually using liquid methane. Here we have the launch of an H-2B with an HTV to the International Space Station. So there's a straight up resupply, except the HTV here does not have the unpressurized section. So I wanted to maximize how much we were carrying in the pressurized section as far as food, water, and oxygen. So I dumped the unpressurized section, which I didn't need. So it is a somewhat smaller HTV. And here we are completing the first stage burn. And off that goes, and we have the upper stage. Overall, this model is very nice, but the fairings are weird. They don't separate by normal staging. You have to use this jettison shroud. I could do an action group with it, but um, even then, they separate weirdly, as you can see. And they have no physics relevance, so they can't collide with anything. But it's all very awkward. Okay, here I'm trying to make as quick a rendezvous as possible. You can see the closest approach distance getting under 200 kilometers up there, and I've got the target right there. So we're just trying to go straight for it. And here separating off the first stage, and you can see the truncated HTV, and I unlocked the fuel on it. And soon enough we are doing rendezvous burns. Uh, the little thrusters at the bottom of this don't have plumes. Uh, something to do with having RCS on the same thing? I don't know. Anyway, that rendezvous burn was done, and we reserved enough fuel to eventually deorbit that HTV, but first we have to deorbit this one, which is taking up the space that that one is going to occupy. 
So off it goes. This is a full HTV with the unpressurized section. Its job is done and the new one arrives. So final docking with this HTV. Very cautious. I normally approach at about 0.2 meters per second. I think they just grab it. I, I don't think it does a uh, powered approach to the station. They, they would just use the arm. But that would take me much, much longer than just docking it straight. So here we go and docked. So there is the International Space Station as it was right there. That was the end of that live stream, and so this is the next live stream, and I had made a change to the ion engines. I decided to give them more thrust. They were originally based on a real ion engine, uh, the X3 ion thruster, and basically we had 50 of them on each of those uh, ion ships going to Mercury. But I decided to up the thrust, given that we had a nuclear reactor attached anyway, and we had way more power than they were consuming, and... By upping the thrust, we can have much more accurate burns. They still take a long time, but again, we can do time warp during them. So, with the iffiness of the Attila thruster, I decided to send this new uh, supply vehicle out to try and intercept Arthur. Again, on the Daenerys Aerospike SSTO, which you see there. I accidentally shut it off a little bit too early. We've got a lopsided orbit. It's tough sometimes making orbit in one ignition with an SSTO. You really have to get the trajectory right. And here is the transfer burn using nuclear engines. Two timber winds this time. I forget. Uh, uh, those are the full 250s. Those are each 250 tons of thrust. So those are our largest timber winds. Burning the liquid hydrogen. And you can see sort of an encounter shaping up there. But again, a tremendous relative speed to the target, which is one other benefit of increasing the thrust on the ion engines. We will be able to match speeds a little bit easier. Uh, it, it'll still take a few days actually with the ion engines, so it will take some planning. Next up we launched a supply vessel with the Attila thruster with the right sized Attila thruster. So this has the full sized Attila thruster that matches the nuclear reactor and the generator. So this will provide proper thrust. So now we'll have three different supply missions head out to Arthur to ensure that Arthur does not die from food, water, and oxygen deprivation. So this is all exactly as we had in the previous mission. Now the one iffy thing about just giving the ion thrusters more thrust is that we kept the mass the same. So we're assuming that we can make the ion engines the same mass and still get more thrust. Now we're, we've got nuclear re a nuclear reactor that can provide all the power they need. So the power to thrust uh, is still okay. There's no iffiness there. But the mass of the ion engine itself, not the mass of the reactor, that's fine. But the mass of the ion engine itself might need to be heavier if it's providing more thrust. It depends. I mean, I don't know exactly what kind of advances in ion engine technology they might have. So uh, briefly we saw the Mars station. I often time warp at the Mars station so that we can make sure that the water recycling is happening. This is a replacement lander because we ditched uh, R3 King's lander to, uh, to land on Mercury with and so we needed to send a replacement. And we're doing a flyby of Venus right now. So that is what's happening here. We're just getting Venus's help for once to get to Mercury. But of course, and then here we are departing Venus. It was an interesting uh, sight on the nighttime side. And of course, we're going to have to make a correction plot and really hit Mercury more accurately. And so that's what I do here. And the rest of the stream was mainly a whole lot of correction burns as we have a whole lot of vehicles around Mercury, well not around Mercury, getting to Mercury somehow. And so they all have to be dealt with. Next up here is the mission with the correct size Attila thruster. We're still using the nuclear stage to help it out, but then uh, we move on to the Attila thruster there. You can see it's full size and also 
more moderate burn time. And what we have here, we are trying to get that Mercury probe in orbit, but uh, the problem is we couldn't stage it. So I came up with a trick. It turns out that the thrusters we had on the upper portion on the probe itself were able to provide thrust even though it wasn't decoupled off. So we got, we were getting some thrust out of it. So I'm transferring the RCS fuel up to the top to replenish it in the hope that it can get us into orbit around Mercury. But with the previous stage still there, it couldn't do it. It didn't provide enough Delta V. It was going to be a close call anyway. So regardless of that cheat, that did not work. <laughs> so that probe is doomed. That It already crashed the game during that stream once, by the way. I cut that part out. Anyway, so there we have a whole bunch of correction burns, including this one. This is the return vessel. This is supposed to push Arthur's vessel back home to Earth at the end. Uh, we'll see if it manages to do that, but it's still got a lot of burning to do. I didn't actually complete uh, its attempt to get into Mercury orbit during this live stream. But it has a good chance now as thrust has been increased, you can see that its burn time is not nearly what it was before. It's basically been cut down by a factor of 10. So I do expect to be able to do it, but we'll see whether that actually happens in the next episode. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.